Uh, I thought it was a great atmosphere uh, today uh, for everyone to get there early and be loud and lively for an 11 o'clock game. It says a lot about our fans and I thought throughout the game that the excitement and energy in the building was terrific. And uh, in terms of the game itself, our guys played with really good energy. I thought our focus uh, in the first half on, the, on some of the defensive details uh, was terrific. Uh, I think they had 23 at the half. Uh, and and uh, that, that really is what allowed us to win the game, is our, our first half defense and then being able to put the ball in the basket to score 80. Coach, what were you telling your, your team in the second half when they started to make a little mini run and when the refs started calling the game more tight? Yeah, it's a challenge because uh, you know, when you get whistled for a lot of quick early fouls, it, uh, it can take away from your aggressiveness. And I think it did that a little bit uh, to our defense. But you have to adjust. I mean, we, have to, we have to do a better job adjusting. So that's one of the things we talked about. Um, but, you know, they, you know, Lindsey and Anthony are really good players. Those guys, I thought, you know, a lot of credit goes to them for the way they attacked. Um, we did a we did a pretty good job on everyone else, um, and that's really what allowed us to win. Shaka, six guys in double figures, almost sixty percent shooting in the second half, only seven turnovers. Is that as inefficient an offensive game as you could have hoped for against a team that's that good defensively? Well, every team's different on uh, on defense, and you know, so against Richmond. Our guys, our older guys, have seen their defensive style and understand what they do. I thought we did a nice job on offense, for the most part, of not holding the ball, uh, really keeping the ball moving, continuing to drive, getting to getting to multiple drives. Tried to throw it inside some early. They did a Richmond did a nice job uh, taking that away from Javante, but I thought Javante did a nice job going and getting some balls on the offensive glass. Uh, but overall, Bree and Jay Quan really ran the offense well. Uh, they, they ran the team well. We got to the basket a lot. Um, and to score 81 points, that, that gives us a really good chance to win. Shaka, uh, Briante is known for his steals and for his working record today. Could you talk about his offensive progression and how he's, he's hit that figure straight point about that night? Well, you know, he's really improving as a leader. And you know, he was uh, an apprentice under Darius Theus for two years. And he's, he's not the same player as Darius. Uh, they both have strengths that are a little bit different. But Darius is the best we've had here uh, at leadership. And there was a void created by his graduation. And uh, Briante has done a really nice job helping fill that void. Uh, he's, 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 got the, he's the most charismatic guy uh, on our team, the most energetic guy on our team, and he's doing a nice job bringing guys together. And then what happens is when you focus on your teammates, good things happen for you. And so, you know, he's, he's been playing better and better on offense, taking shots that come to him. He's been putting in work on his outside shooting and practice, and uh, that's paying off. Well, yeah, I think the co focus as a coach is, is uh, you want to keep getting better. And uh, we, last year, made some major strides, I think, after we got back from the tournament we played in the Bahamas and really improved. And then we got in the league play. Uh, we had to feel our way around because it was a new league and understand the elevated level of play. Uh, and this year, I think, Again, in Puerto Rico, we had a tough time. We got humbled. Uh, we came back. I think we've improved. Uh, after the Northern Iowa game, we, we, we learned a little bit about what it's going to take uh, on the road. And so the similarity would just be getting better, improving. Uh, but obviously, there's a lot of basketball ahead of us, and that's we want to keep improving, keep getting better. Shaka, they talk about the crowd and the atmosphere a lot here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think I've always said this since my first year. 
I've never been at a place where there's such a just a feeling of a good relation, uh, such a good relationship between the team and mostly the players, but but the team overall and the crowd. And the crowd obviously is made up of students, it's made up of alumni, it's made up of uh, you know people that live around town and, and support our team. And that relationship uh, has just continued to grow. Uh, I think uh, in, in the five years that I've been here, it certainly has. Um, we're really appreciative, Paul, of, of uh, the fans that we have, uh, not just at home games. I mean, when we went up to LaSalle, uh, the, our crowd was awesome. I mean, they, they, uh, they were loud, they were boisterous, they were into the game. And, you know, our, our crowd is a huge part of our um, success as a program. And, you know, hopefully as – uh, our, our fans and our crowd keeps getting more and more uh, frenzied, which is the word I like. I, I, I like it when this place is a frenzy. You know, hopefully our team can keep progressing as well. But you've got you mass coming in. I think you have oh, we got to go there. Better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That type of thing, every little bit helps, and that type of thing would be good. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's today. Richmond, with Richmond coming, I mean, Richmond's a really good team. They're a top 50 RPI team. They're, that's a team that's, that's uh, uh, beaten some really good people and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll win some games in this league and, and be a contender. Um, so we just have, uh, when, we're, when we're at home, we, we have a big energy boost from the people that make up our crowd. And the band, obviously, is phenomenal. Uh, and it's just such a dynamic, different dynamic when you're home versus when you're on the road. Uh, but we will certainly appreciate who we have. And selling out 46 consecutive games, I mean, our guys are spoiled. I say it all the time to them. They, they just don't understand. Uh, they don't understand that it's just not like that too many places. Uh, but, you know, Briante's class and younger has never seen anything different. I mean, every single game they've played has been sold out. So we certainly uh, are not entitled to that, but we appreciate it. Coach, how much pride have you guys taken the moments with at home? You mention it at all. No, uh, we don't mention it. Uh, we take pride in, in uh, you know, trying to win games individually in terms of wins at home. Uh, I think this is a tough place to play. If you look at the record over the years since the Siegel Center was built, uh, it, it, it's, you know, it's been really, really good. And what's made it good is the fans and uh, the teams and more than anything, the players that have gone and, and, and created those wins. Uh, we, that, we love getting people here because uh, good opponents here because it, we, we feel like we have a good chance to win. Now, you still have to go out and play the game and do the things that go into it. But uh, our team's at its best when we're energetic, and focused. And being in a game here at home, you, you have a hard time not being energetic. There's something wrong. If you, it, It's happened before. Uh, it happened Joey's senior year at the end of the regular season. But for the most part, I think the energy part, uh, if we put our best foot forward, is, is going to be there. And then the focus part is, you know, is on our coaches and our players. He was in some pain, you know, but at the same time, I think this was one of those games where he learned in the second half, hey, I'm all right, you know, I can, I can attack these guys. He was much more aggressive in the second half, got to the foul line a lot. Um, so he was in some pain. He certainly was not pain-free, but I, I give our uh, athletic trainer, Eddie Benyon, a lot of credit. Him and Trey really worked around the clock on treatment, and he was not in a position to play today. Uh, he was not in a position to play 24, 48 hours ago. So, uh, you know, those guys did a good job working on his toe, and now we'll get him some rest over the next day or two, and, you know, I think he'll keep getting better. But it's, it's one of those things that, that could continue to bother him some. Jamie Skeen had a similar injury his senior year. <laughs> Six guys in double figures. How much of a luxury is it to 
has so many guys that can score on, on any given night? Well, it's, I think it's important because uh, we didn't have two guys score 52 points. Uh, so against LaSalle, we had two guys score 61 points. But on a night where, or on a day, I still got to eat lunch. I don't know what you guys <laughs> um, On a day where, you know, your, your leading scorers, Javante Reddick and Travion Graham, have kind of modest scoring days, it's huge. I mean, you need, you, you need other guys to chip in and, and, and help your team. Melvin Johnson, he can really score. I mean, that's, that's why we recruited him. I mean, he, that's what he does. Jaquan Lewis can really score. Uh, those are two guys off the bench that give us a big lift. And then, you know, as we mentioned, Briante is playing better and better on offense. Uh, we just want all our guys to understand Trey and Bree are, are, are the guys that ne they need to get the ball a lot. And the good thing about those guys is, or excuse me, Trey and Jew, the good thing about those guys is they're not selfish. You know, they're going to pass the ball when they don't have something. Is it shocking or surprising to you, Shaka, that um, for all he has going on on the court, for all his energy and stuff, that Briante knew exactly when he got those skills record? Is that surprising to me? That he was keeping track in his head? It only <laughs> took him eight minutes. Absolutely not. Uh, that's exactly how he is. You, and you guys make a pretty big deal out of the steel thing. So he's, he's been aware of that. And, you know, now he probably has a countdown going for the next record. Uh, that's just how he is. But you know what? When I played, I knew how many assists I had. It was just kind of my thing. Like, so I, I don't have a problem with that as long as it doesn't affect your focus on everything else. Uh, so some, some guys are like, some guys' minds work that way. And he wanted that record today, and he went and got it. It's like a big deal to a lot of the other guys on the team, too. Well, it's impressive. I mean, to, to do that in such a uh, – first of all, Rolando Lamb, one of the all-time greats here. Uh, but to do it in, in, in so many less games than Rolando did, I mean, that's really, really impressive. And, again, as, as I've said before, defensively, there could not be a better – better player for our style of play. I mean, I, you could say, okay, you can pick anyone around the country to fit the way you guys play defense. And I'd say, no, we, we, we got the one we want. He was counting down two, one with his fingers after each steal. Did you notice any of that? Oh, he's got all these antics. He's, <laughs> he's a trip, man. I mean, you want, you want to uh, the last thing you want to do with a guy with, with enthusiasm and energy is stifle it. But at the same time, you want to, to keep him focused on what really matters. So that's been a balance that we've worked to strike uh, in his first couple years here. And then his junior year this year, he's doing a better job of striking that balance on his own and kind of understanding you know, when it's time to be Bree and then when it's time to be serious. Coach, how much of him breaking this record is it 